Welcome back to Beanie's Hobbies and in this video we're going to be taking a look at this Airy one ER20. Now just recently picked this printer up and I've been giving it a go and what a fantastic little printer this is. Really is brilliant. Uh, we'll go over a few of the features, we'll take a look at a few of the prints that I have done and yeah, we'll go from there. So, I'll we'll just get these prints out of the way. We can actually take a look at the machine. Now, build platform wise, we have got 250 by 220 by 200. So, we've got sort of a funny size build platform. Uh, we have got a glass bed with their coating on they use. And I've had nothing come unstick off here, unstuck at all. It really does stick well once it's heated up. Um, we have also got a 32-bit main board installed along with 2209 silent stepper drivers. So this thing is ultra quiet. The only noise you can hear is coming from the fans on the hot end. Now we do have their own sort of BL Touch auto leveling bed sensor. Let me just take you off this tripod. We can have a little better look around. Now, like I so say, down here we do have their own form of, like I say, BL Touch for bed levelling. Now, this machine is completely end stop or sensorless. You'll see there's no end stops at all anywhere on this machine. Uh, there is also no bed levelling adjustment knobs on this machine either. It's all done by this sensor, BL Touch, every sensor, so they've called it. I can get you in a bit closer and get my camera to focus. Uh, which is not going to, because there's just going to be a pig. Now we do have plastic hot end, we do have cooling fan for the hot end two cooling fans now I do quite like the fact that this gantry as you can see is all numbered on both sides so you can actually help that actually helps making sure that you obviously keep your hot end level to the bed now we also on this machine we do have dual z-axis lead screws so we've got one and we have another one down there. Do have a plastic extruder. Uh, there is no filament detection on this machine either. But pff, who cares about that? Now, my only one gripe about this printer, let's just move these, is where this SD card. The SD card fits in down here, and it is a bit of a pig, as you can tell, to get in and out. You do need to have a good nail to be able to push that in and out of that slot then it sits sort of flush. But I feel like they need to do something about that. So let's just fire this up. Now also we don't have any touch screen or anything on this. It's all done with this control knob. So obviously we have hot end temperature, bed temperature. We also have temperature here that tells you the temperature of the motherboard. So the control board, so you can see how hot the control board is. But you know, it's easy enough to use. Everything is in here that we need. So on the beginning of every single print, it will then level the bed and it will then start printing. So this is very, very easy to use. Ideal for a, obviously a newbie. Obviously, I'm not a newbie, but I still love this printer. I think it's amazing. Just a shame the build platform wasn't a little bit bigger. So, now we also do have power resume feature on this as well. So, obviously, if you have a power loss, it will resume the print. It's got USB down here on the side, so you can connect it up to your computer if needed. This is... A really, really smart little printer. 
Now this came in three pieces. So obviously the top part of the gantry was already assembled so we literally just had to screw that to the actual base. And then the only other thing we had to do was fit the two screws here which holds the hot end to the printer. Oh and sorry then we just had to screw on up underneath there. We had to screw on the filament holder, spool holder. So now we'll show a few of the prints that I've done. I've been printing with this with their own Airy One glitter silver PLA. Now I just want to put you guys back on the tripod. So excuse the camera shake because there's going to be some. Alright, so let's get you guys back on the tripod. Spin you around. Alright, okay, so the test prints that I first done are these guys. So we had a vase, vase, which came out. Which actually came out incredibly well. There was no issues with this at all. Really, really smooth print very impressed with the quality and then also we had my camera really does not want to focus and then we had a little squirrel yet again no over extrusion no under extrusion absolutely no faults with this at all whatsoever then obviously we had the little test cube Yet again, came out absolutely flawless. So then I decided to step it up a bit, put it through its paces and printed this vase. Absolutely no faults with this. Came out flawlessly. Prints on this machine are looking absolutely gorgeous. And to finish it off, I gave it a test by printing, which I've just chucked across the desk. These bearings, as you can see, they're all loose and smooth. Spins with absolutely no issues. So this printer is working flawlessly. And I'm so very pleased with the way all these prints are coming out. This is a very good printer if you're just starting out. Like I say, no bed levelling to do at all whatsoever. Just basically stick your card in and away you go. On a side note, I will mention if you're using Cura, there is actually no files on Cura for this printer at all. Um, but with the instructions, it will give you how to um, set up Cura to use with this machine. Also on the SD card that comes with it, there are profiles to load into Cura for it as well. So it's not an issue, you don't need to worry about that. Now I will say this is not a cheap machine, uh, depending on where you are in the world at the moment. I mean, obviously I'm over here in the UK, and from their website direct from their guys, from everyone, it's gonna cost you about 319 pounds. But for me, I would say it's worth every penny because it just works so well. Um, heat up wise, it's quick. The nozzle heats up extremely fast. The bed takes a little bit longer. It's with all these sort of 3D printers, you know, the beds do take a little bit longer to heat up. Um, you do have you can, obviously there's no screws to adjust your belt tensions, but you can just slacken off your nuts here and adjust your belt tension. Same down below, there's another one, there's another, but, ugh, my god, I can't get my words out. You can unscrew these to adjust your belt tension. Um, the only one issue I had with this machine when it arrived is the screen was unplugged. So I had to take it all apart to plug the screen in. So keep in mind if you get one of these and you turn it on and your screen doesn't come on, I'm going to guarantee you that they forgot to plug the screen in. So that is the only issue that I had with this machine. It's not a heavy machine, it's quite light machine. 
And this is plastic, moulded plastic at the bottom here. Plastic moulds along the top. Obviously there is aluminium up here inside. You've got your aluminium rails down the side here. Aluminium rails, the runner for the bed. But apart from that, this machine is fantastic. Don't have to ever worry about your end stop switches wearing out because there isn't any on any of the axes at all whatsoever. It's completely, like I say, completely senseless. Very, very, very quiet. Like I say, the only noise you'll hear from this when running and printing is the hot end fans. I mean, you can hear a bit of noise in here at the moment, but I've got several other printers running. But like I say, the only noise you'll hear from this while it's printing is the fans here on the hot end. Really, I haven't got much more to say about this machine because it is just, it's just fantastic. Um, everyone only makes two printers. They do this one and then they do the Thinker. They do the Thinker and the Thinker SE, so three, sorry. Um, I haven't actually got the Thinker SE. I have actually got one on order. That's a lot bigger build plate than this, but obviously it doesn't have auto leveling as standard or anything like that, so. That's something that we'll have a look at a bit later on down the line because I'm still waiting for it to arrive. But no, uh, good machine, well built, solid. Prints are coming out absolutely amazing. I would personally say this thing prints better than the Ender 3 V2 and it also prints better than the Corality CR6 SE. I would have had a choice and choose again between the CR6 SE or this. I would pick this. I mean, yes, the build area is slightly smaller, but it's an all round lot better printer. I haven't really got much more to say about this printer, apart from if you're looking for a new 3D printer with a smaller build volume, give it a look, guys. You will not be disappointed with this machine. Like I say, prints are coming out phenomenally well. No issues with it at all whatsoever. Well, Apart from my screen wasn't plugged in, um, that was a five minute fix. Assembly took me 10 minutes in total. Um, Levelling the bed to start off with, you just use this little piece of paper on the corner. It tells exactly what to do on the screen. Just adjust, just a nozzle, so it just touches the build plate. And then save it, you're done, that is it. That's all the setup that is required for this machine. Very simple, very easy to use. Prints coming out awesome. What else can you say? This thing is amazing. Give it a look, guys. You will not be disappointed, I can guarantee it. Like I said, this is not sponsored. I have bought this with my own money and I do not regret it at all whatsoever. This machine is brilliant. Over here at Beanie's Hobbies, we give it a big thumbs up. Anyway, guys, that's it for me for waffling on for this time. Like I say, print a giveaway coming up at a thousand subscribers. We're getting there very slowly. I've sort of been stuck on 650 now for a while. So if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. And yeah, thank you all very much for subscribing so far. Hopefully we can grow the channel a bit more. And that's all for me for this time. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheerio!